people, Leo friends, and welcome to your April 2020 horoscope. And Leo, I am pumped to have you here. This is a month where I feel like not only do we have permission for some forward action, but we're also going to think outside of our normal bounds and our normal comfort zones of how we're doing things and we've been trying to get things done. I feel like April is a month where you get to get some answers to some questions you've been asking. But the deal is, is that you've got to step up and step into them in order to really take advantage of them. And that is just the business of being a Leo, right? In a Leo incarnation or in a Leo sun energy, you are really trying to own and hone and find and step into your own voice. And this month, I really feel like shows you where you've done that already and where you can take it to the next step. So I feel like April's a brilliant month before we start to head into retrograde season. So let's jump in here and see what is going on on the Pride Lands, okay? All right, so first things first to take a little bit of note of. Mars is going to be traveling along with... Um, Saturn in the energy of Aquarius, just your opposite energy all month long. So this continues to light up the seventh house. The seventh house is about relationships, conscious, chosen, one-on-one -on -one relationships. This can be romantic. This can be with business partners. This can be with yourself. Wherever you have these one-on-one -on -one relationships, Saturn has come in here and says, okay, look, we need to get serious. We're going to take this to the next level. So one of the things you may be experiencing in yourself, in your relationships, is like this growing period. You feel like there's a little bit of some growing pains going on. This area has gotten more serious. Maybe there's more obligation. Maybe you're having to step up and take more responsibility here. Certainly with Mars here in the energy of Aquarius, you're in action. Mars is action, energy, assertion, movement, but this is boots on the ground. You're not just having idle energy here, Leo. You are in movement here. So perhaps something that's happening is Aquarius is a very social energy. It's a very, very social energy. So maybe something in your relationships, you're having to have a lot of conversation or you're having to be very social or you're just being very social, but whatever it is, you're being social you're having conversation, you're engaging in relationships at another level, which means for some of us, what's going to happen is the relationships that don't fit, that can't make it any further, they can't hold on to this Aquarian vibration. Those relationships are going to fall off as well. Saturn and Aquarius is going to welcome in new healthy relationships and they maybe are not even brand new. They've maybe been around you and you haven't fully accessed them yet, but whatever it is, this area of your life is getting serious. And remember, it is the business of a Leo to own your voice. What needs to be said? What do you need to be talking about? Mercury, even though he's our communication planet and he's been over here in the energy of Pisces for quite some time, you've maybe been feeling through some things that need to be happening. Maybe you've been getting dreams or been getting visions or visions of what you'd like this to be looking like. The sun has moved into the energy of Aries where it's exalted also a fellow fire sign. So you have some oomph and you're going to have some power this month to speak up and to make some changes, take some actions in relationships that maybe need to be taken. So I think that's absolutely brilliant energy for you. Now, the other thing I want to point out before I break this month down by date for you is that We've got Jupiter and Pluto traveling together all month long. They're going to, on the 4th, officially make their first conjunction of three that we're going to have this year. But with these two traveling together this month, something that kept coming through for me when I was writing out the horoscope is that this is actually a very good indicator that if you are looking to um, buy a house, sell a house, something with a family member or something around the family unit, this is actually very helpful to helping you get that thing done. Where I get that indicator from is in the general reading, which this is a general reading, Pluto rules over your fourth house because it rules over this Scorpio energy here, right? Jupiter is over Sagittarius, which is the fifth house here. Both of these, this is a starting house and this has to do with the family. As these two travel together, this gives me the thought that your fourth and your fifth house are conjoining in some way, shape, or form energetically. So really, truly, if you were trying to 
um, buy a house, sell a house, you needed to move a parent around, something like that. Many people will still be under the energy of quarantine as we come into April. If you're needing to take care of them, whatever this is, this is a successful energy that is very, very helpful to you. So I wanted to point that out before we jump in here and get started, okay? All right, at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, we see Venus who's been traveling very, very comfortably up in the energy of Taurus. She's been at home, been very comfortable. Now she's going to move forward into the energy of Gemini. This lights up your 11th house. Now, Venus as a planet, what she brings to the table is beauty, harmony. She's our smallest benefic planet, so she's trying to bring benefit wherever she's going. In the energy of Gemini, it's communication. We're going to do that. We're going to bring the benefits by communicating, right? And where are we going to communicate? The 11th house through friends, social networking, groupings of some variety, maybe even organizations could be something that you're taking on. Venus is also here to sweeten up your ideas of your long range plans, goals, designs, the vision you want for your life. I also happen to believe that when Venus comes into the 11th house, wherever she goes, First, she likes to bring you some money. So you could be making money online. You could also be put in a position where it's like, hey, Leo, we need your voice. We need you to speak at some social level. So your voice could be being called to the table. Venus is also a big fan of bringing some romance. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of you don't have a romance happening in your life. And maybe even it comes from a romance that this person was just a friend or you just knew them socially. And this has given you a time to somehow come together a little bit more that could certainly be an energy that is happening now keep in mind mercury our communication planet who also rules over this gemini energy is in pisces so this could be a setup where someone or something from your past is also now come into your social life or your social view and venus is sweetening this and making this very very useful for you to communicate if you do create content or you do something like that, Venus will also enhance your magnetism in being seen and being heard and having people kind of drawn to you as well. So it's absolutely a beautiful movement for Venus to be taking on. Now, one of the things that happens, though, as Venus comes here into this Gemini placement is that Venus moves into her position in orbit that we call out of bounds. So what that essentially means for us is that we too have to move out of bounds, which means in your social circles, in the way that you make money, um, in the way that you value things here, you're going to need to look for answers outside of your comfort zone. You can't keep looking in the same exact place or you can't keep having the exact same behavior happening here. Now, something else that will help you is that not only is Saturn over here in the Aquarius energy, which naturally rules the 11th house, and Saturn is getting serious about the relationships that you're connected with, right? So you're even looking out of bounds over here because maybe the relationships have gotten so uncomfortable that you're like, I need a tribe. I need new information. I need to learn something else as well. The Uranian energy that naturally rules the 11th house as well is up here in the energy of Taurus. So it does make me think that this could certainly be something around what you do or what you're known for in the world, not just work. It could certainly be work. Your work could be taking you in different directions. Maybe you're really having to do a lot of work online, but this could also be who you're known as in the world is, are you someone's wife or someone's husband? Are you someone's girlfriend? You could be getting ready to change your position or your status with that as well. But what it's gonna come from is getting a little bit out of your comfort zone in order to allow this area to be renewed. Now, Venus travels out of bounds all month long, so look outside of your normal circle. The information is definitely there and a tribe is certainly waiting for you. Now, also at the same time, we have Mercury and Neptune traveling together and they're gonna make a conjunction. So this is one thing I wanna tell you. Mercury in Pisces is in fall, so not the strongest position. It's best for kind of detoxing, right? And with Mercury and being in the eighth house here, maybe what you're needing or wanting to do is have like a financial detox or a fear detox. You're like, oh, I can't live in this fear anymore. I need to speak up. I need to, I need to own this situation. I need to whatever. You need to be very Leo. Let us see your heart, right? It could also be, um, this comes back to me for me 
to some things in relationships as well. If these relationships in your world need some detoxing or need some, some health brought to them, this is a, a phenomenal energy to use for that. What it's not good to do is make huge life-changing decisions because this is actually a foggy energy. And what's best is to walk in that place that's between the worlds, like a detox or something like that, or something very creative at that time. Now, as Mercury begins to move forward, you'll get a little bit more help. And the other thing I wanna bring your attention to is because this is a foggy placement, and because in the general, Mercury rules your second house, this is not an ideal time to make a financial decision. You may not have all the facts and the details, okay? All right, on the fourth, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto together for the first of their three conjunctions that they're going to make this year. And this is a big deal. This happens once every 13 years. So think back. 13 years ago, you started something. You put your back into something that you began. And that's what you're going to do right here as well. Now, at this particular conjunction, they are both out of retrograde. So we know we've got forward motion here, fully forward motion. In June, they'll be in retrograde, so we'll re view what we start right now and at the end of the year we get to push it forward so when Pluto and Jupiter come together in a conjunction here in your sixth house the number one thing I'm going to tell you is be driven put your back into it and move something forward that is about your health your health your wellness um, your health and well-being the health of your family that we talked about here right the health of your joy the health of your voice what are you driven to move forward but either way what it will absolutely require of you Leo is for you to Leo up right like join the pride join the tribe in that 11th house and allow them to encourage you to speak your big voice because your voice is being called to the table now we know that even further because we're gonna have a full moon oh come on moon we're gonna have a full moon happening on the 7th and it's gonna be at 18 degrees of Libra wouldn't you know it it's right there in the third house Leo the third house of communication and what are we communicating about relationships you see what I'm saying the relationship tie-ins that are happening for you this month are a big deal so this full moon here says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So do you need to have a conversation about ending something? Do you need to have a conversation? And I'm saying conversation because of third house. This is where we think. This is where we converse. This is where we learn. We make some decisions here, right? Do you need to have an acknowledgement about something that's going on in relationships? Are you out of balance? in your relationships in some way, shape, or form, and so a conversation does need to come to the table. Now, another place we may see these relationship things showing up for you is let's say that you um, wanted to learn something or you were learning something. Maybe you're finishing a course at this time because the moon is bringing something to culmination or the way you've been trying to study it is just not working and you need to make an adjustment in your study habits. I certainly think because the third house does have to do with siblings and neighbors, this could be some kind of transition that's happening here. Maybe a sibling um, needs your help taking care of a parent, something like that. That could certainly come to the table. And anything that has to do with contracts, documents, agreements, buying, selling houses, cars, any of those things will certainly be getting an adjustment with this moon happening here. But at 18 degrees of Libra, we're looking for where does Leo need to re balance. And this will also be against the energy of the sun. You're pulled in two different directions, the big idea and then the smaller idea that you're kind of holding on to your big voice minus versus your, your smaller voice. Okay. Now we've got on the ninth, I want to tell you about this because I think it's a big deal to understand how the energy shifts on the ninth. Venus is still going to be here in the energy of Gemini and it's going to be there all the way until June 25th when we finish this retrograde. So Venus has got quite the stay in the energy of Gemini. But on the 9th, Venus is going to start the pre-retrograde shadow time. So it means she's slowing down and getting ready for her reversal, right? Or the illusion of her reversal. Now, this is going to be in the 11th house. So what this is going to start to do as Venus slows down is, first of all, 
it may slow down communications that you've had, right? Venus rules not only your third house, but she also rules your 10th house. So in business, you could start to see business slowing down or you're sending out that resume, you're sending out a communication, you've put out that broadcast and it's like, wait a minute, how come it's not got a lot of response? Venus is starting to slow down in things that are happening. She's also gonna start to just give you a big old blast of a preview in this 11th house about what's going on with those relationships. What do you need to review? And you're gonna do the full review of it during the retrograde from May 13th all the way until June 25th. But right now you're starting to get a little taste test of what you're gonna be reviewing. And that's gonna be around friends, groupings, your, your future plans, technology is going to be huge in here. Maybe even a romance that's involved in there or the way that you're investing your money socially in some way, shape, or form will certainly be under your review. Now, Venus is going to come direct when we get out of this in June at five degrees of Gemini. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're going forward that she's going to back all the way up to five degrees of Gemini. So check that in your charts, okay? Oh, and if you don't have a chart, please click down below and get one or go pull a free one from astro.com or cafe or something like that. Okay, on the 11th, we've got Mercury headed out of this energy of Pisces, moving into the energy of Aries over here in your ninth house. Now, the Sun and Mercury together, whenever they get together, this is phenomenal for conversation. This is phenomenal for decision making. The Sun is exalted up here. Mercury has come on in, and it's like, welcome to the party. Mercury is going to be up here until the 27th of the month. So, one of the things I keep thinking of is your ruler is the sun and that's in the ninth house so maybe this is you're traveling you could be traveling in some way we know that mercury is a ruler of your second health and house in your 11th house so maybe digitally you're traveling or you're doing digitally something online but it also involves your money which makes me think of work but work could also just be taking you into a place where maybe you are traveling in some way shape or form certainly mercury and aries and i laugh about this this placement because my husband has this like we're speaking forcefully right we're making forceful decisions Decisions. We're here to win. We're being direct. We're being decisive. So whatever this looks like at this big expanded level, publishing, broadcasting, media, marketing, higher education, um, faith, belief, higher mind, any of those things, things that have to do with the law, you're going to be speaking quite forcefully. It is in your favor to speak up. I said what I said is the phrase of Leo this month, okay? All right, on the 19th, though, the sun is moving on. Done with all of that. On the 19th, the sun is going to move into the energy of Taurus, joining that Uranian energy. So now your 10th house is lit up. Whenever the sun moves to the tip top of our chart, right, we know that we're going to shine. So, Leo, you've got some shine coming up here, being very seen, very public, even my shy Leos. Something about you is trying to expand out and trying to shine. Now, doing this in the energy of Taurus, it is grounded, it is practical, it is sturdy, it is stable, but it's also a very independent energy. Taurus at the top of your chart really wants to do their own thing. So this could certainly be an energy where you've got some level of pretty good independence in your work life or in your what you are known as life. Remember, I touched on that at the beginning of the video. So the sun could be certainly ushering in some changes up here at the top of the chart. Now, when we get to the 22nd, we're going to have a new moon also happening up here at the top of the chart. So plant those seeds of intention around career, right? Around work, around what you want to be doing or you want to be known as in the world. And when I say that, truly, here's here's an example, right? Let's say that you've got a relationship going on because we know there is relationship conversation or relationship dynamic that needs your attention this month. If you need help shifting it, you feel like you've done everything you know how to do and you need some help, plant your seeds of intention for information and solution and resolution to come your way. Even if you're in the best relationship ever but you're like I don't know where do we go from here plant your seeds of intention the energy is going to come to you over this next four weeks and certainly over this next year you'll see how this area of either your career what you're known as where you're shining at is going to come to the shift that you need so plant those seeds of intention at that new moon
On the 25th, we see Pluto heading into retrograde. Now, I'm going to do a separate video all about the Pluto retrograde so we can really get in there on it. But what we need to know right now is that, first of all, for you with Pluto going retrograde, what that is going to slow down for you is your Pluto area, the area of housing, home, family, real estate, property. All of these things are going to slow down and they need to be reviewed. Now, this is also going to be really in relation to your sixth house, your health, your wellness. With Pluto retrograde over there, you're going back over to review your health, your daily routine, your independent work habits that are already there. If you're a freelance employee, you're going back over this to see what needs to be transformed and evolved. This is our Phoenix energy. He says something has to die off so that something else can live. So what are we transforming here? You've already seen it. You've already been looking at it. But what is changing here? What do you need to go back over and see? Now, something to keep in mind. Pluto is here going retrograde at 24 degrees of Capricorn, okay? Uh, we've also got this transiting south node that is just vibrating Capricorn energy. The the urge is going to be to stay in the old pattern, stay in the old idea, stay where you are. And that is not what we're being asked to do. During this retrograde, you go back over and see what you're willing to allow to yourself to shed so that it can transform, so that you can nurture something else over here. You're literally nurturing your own freedom here, okay? On the At the end of the month, we've also got Mercury hitting the road, and he's ready to move over here and join your 10th house friends as well. Venus is drunk. So we want to invite Mercury over here and say, welcome. Thank you for bringing communication over here. So if it's anything from work-related things, you could be having lots of messages, lots of digital things happening in your world, lots of emails. Maybe you're working on a project and Mercury is moving in the energy of Taurus until May 11th. Mercury moves slow here, but also is busy. Mercury in your 10th house in Taurus is phenomenal for making long-range plans, goals, and solid business decisions for your company, for your life, for your world. Where do you want to invest your money? Taurus is moving low and slow and is very much so attached to things like money and things of value. Mercury is one of your money planets. This is a good position to make some financial decisions, okay? All right, my Leo friends, the pride lands are vast this month. There is plenty of opportunity to move things forward, get some answers to things to maybe you've asked in this last couple months and see where the shift has brought you. The biggest thing I think I just want to leave you with this month is no matter what happens, Leo, own your voice. It is part of the Leo lifetime to own your voice, to find it, and to share it up here. Speak life into your relationship. Speak life into the world. You are literally born, born to do it, okay? All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. Hopefully you've taken advantage of the spring equinox gift, which I have left down there, especially because we're all in quarantine. So take advantage of them while they are still available. I love you so much, my Leo friends, and I will see you next month. Bye.